Hi everyone, Ben here from Zen with Ben in Scottsdale. And I recently reached out online to ask what percussion instruments from sound bath meditations would you like to learn more about? And I'm so excited that people were enthusiastically uh, wanting to learn more about this instrument, the gong. Uh, I work in collaboration as a sound healing artist for Dragonfly Percussion, and one of the products that we're that I'm so excited about is our actual our new resonance line gong mallets. Um, I've spent a lot of time thinking about the ways that sound practitioners work with this particular instrument, and we've gone back to create some wonderful mallets to maximize the effect and the approach to creating beautiful tones on this instrument. Um, this is the large mallet, uh, the teal color there. I I, I I relate to grounding with this instrument, uh, with this mallet. And talking about this instrument here, so the gong, and more specifically the tam-tam, as this is known, um, not to be confused with the Australian cookie, the tim-tam. Tam-tams uh, are gongs with an indefinite pitch. So this instrument doesn't have one tuned note to it the way a singing bowl does. Um, it has a spectrum of overtones that give it an, indef an indefinite pitch. Some gongs do have a pitch, and that is a true gong. Um, it's a pretty small nuance between the way that we talk about these instruments, but if you hear someone mention their tam-tam, they're talking about a gong that has no definite pitch. I prefer tam-tams over gongs. However, it depends on your mode and your setting. Um, there are gongs that are tuned specific to like planetary gongs that have their own frequencies and if you need a specific pitch then that's then you need a gong. Um, I prefer a tam tam, I just find them more universally approachable. So no note there, just a, a, a beautiful mesh of cosmic overtones. And one of the things that I, I really wanted to talk about with this instrument first when people ask me about my approach to playing gong um, is it's important to know your instrument. And every gong, just like every singing bowl, is different. It has its own in idiosyncratic, char idiosyncratic characteristics. Um, but first and foremost, let's talk about playing spots on this instrument. We want to avoid playing dead center of the instrument. This is a nodal point. This is where the least vibration is going to happen. And so it doesn't do us any good to aim for this middle spot. It's really dry and very narrow in its expression of its tone, but we can aim just off center. This kind of lathed area here is a beautiful um, target zone, if you will. And I think that's why people get confused because unless you went to school for percussion, it does look like a big target. And while people might be tempted to aim for the middle, you actually want to avoid the middle. You also want to avoid this area, but I think you'll know if you land there. Um, in general, Towards the center, you're going to find more below fundamentals uh, of your plate. Towards the edge, more of the highs. And it's going to depend on your instrument. I mean, you'll see the variation, but you'll, as a general trend as you approach playing, that's where you'll want to want to play. This is our general mallet. It's a disc-shaped. Um, large rubber core with a little bit of a fleece wrap. And one of the things that you'll notice primarily with the way that I designed these mallets is that I see a lot of orchestral style tam mallets, gong mallets, in sound bath settings where it's a really long beater with a really big heavy head. And they were designed initially from an orchestral standpoint where you're actually standing over the instrument, playing it like a pendulum with enough mass and weight to play over a Mahler piece with, you know, 100 people on stage. And that's not what we do in a sound bath. Generally, you're in a really small space. It's very quiet. And, you're, and I tend to be sitting when I'm playing. I see a lot of practitioners sitting. So the first thing that I did when I spoke with Dinesh Joseph at Dragonfly was to ask him to cut the, the butt the length of the stick, this, this bottom part, the butt down. Um, I see so many players get this long handle and choke halfway up. And then the first thing that they do is that. And then secondly, if they just slip, the butt hits the plate and it cracks lightning all the way across the room and scares the hell out of everyone. So the first thing that I wanted to do was uh, was to take that, that length down. And to me, this is a very nice, very approachable length and weight. out of a 
playing position to overplay the instrument. And I think all, almost all of us have been in a sound bath setting where the practitioner just wails mindlessly on the instrument and it gets way too loud.